Hello everyone, uh, we welcome you to our webinar this afternoon. I am Rich Rushton, I'll be the moderator for today's webinar and our presenter will be David Dart. David is uh, one of our awesome Citrix certified instructors. Before we get started, um, I am going to tell you a little bit about Layer 8 training. We are the largest Citrix authorized training partner in North America. I'm sure some of you have taken classes from us in the past. We have five uh, trainers on staff. David is uh, one of those trainers and uh, we also have the largest open enrollment Citrix schedule in North America. So when you're looking for Citrix training, most of those uh, classes out there are um, delivered by layer eight. We also um, partner very strategically with Citrix. We uh, collaborate on courseware development, on um, all, all the main products for virtualization, mobility, and networking. And we also do more than just Citrix. The um, last bullet point there gives you an idea of some of the other uh, training that we offer. One thing I wanted to mention is because you are attending the webinar today, you do qualify for uh, a special promotion for any upcoming uh, Citrix classes before January 31st. So uh, with that, I am going to turn the time over to uh, David Dart. Well, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you happen to be, and happy holidays as the, as the year slowly rolls down to a close and Citrix is starting to release all their, serv their feature packs for the system. Uh, and as Rich said, I'm the CCI trainer in Zenappens and Desktop, and I teach the classes quite extensively. Today we're going to talk about the features inside of Zenapp 7.6 and I'm going to hit on all of them from Feature Pack 1 all the way up to Feature Pack 3 which recently came out. We're going to, uh, going to talk about some of the, the features that we have. I'll also take you over into a live environment where I can show you the storefront console, how you can manage your uh, deployment using Storefront 3.0. That's the latest version of Storefront. This has taken a departure from the green bubble screen that you may be uh, familiar with, as well as added in some additional administrative tools and features uh, within the console that will then display within the users uh, in the background. The 7.6 version of the Zenapp Zen desktop component, because they are technically the same product. Uh, all the infrastructures are going to be identical uh, for the deployment, the difference being your licensing. So everything is done by via licensing inside of your uh, system. Uh, some of the newer features that you're going to see from the original deployment of 7.1.7.5 that came out with 7.6 when it was released uh, are some additional support for seamless local applications i.e. running an application on the user's machine, local machine but appearing within their, their desktop session on a remote server. So if the user has a Windows 8 uh, component running on the, your hypervisor, they've ICA into that and they're running that Windows 8 desktop but they want to run a local application, we can run that. We've got the FlexCast management architecture. This is pretty much uh, the whole basis for the underlying architecture where we've gotten rid of the local host cache from Zenapp 6.5 and now we're dealing with the flex cache management architecture which relies extensively on the SQL Server database for all activities, your controllers, your delivery controllers I should say are considered seamless. A new feature that came out with 7.6 uh, from earlier versions some of you may or may not be aware of, we have the connection leasing feature that is part of the delivery controllers on the system. This is to address the concerns that many Zenapp 6.5 administrators had about not having a localhost cache in the eventuality of a, a database outage. And connection leasing will maintain a cache on the, the server holding the previously brokered connections into resources uh, on that controller so that if the SQL Server database does go down, uh, the system can continue to broker in connections to resources on the back end. We've got a supplemental grace period licensing, which is a new feature. This differs from the standard licensing 30-day period for a license outage in that the, the grace period licensing allows you to technically exceed the number of licenses that you have in your system. For instance, if you had 100 users and you're 
using all 100 licensing, if you added 10 new employees, the grace period licensing would allow you to add those employees and to create the HDX connection uh, for 15 days. Uh, so you have 15 days to kind of to fix that up. Additionally, we've got some hybrid cloud provisioning where we can provision our controllers in the cloud, Amazon or the Citrix cloud. AppDNA, a very nice tool for rolling out the applications to your users and testing them first. So we basically test the, the virtualized application to ensure they're going to work. And the latest version of AppDNA has included the Windows 10 functionality. So you can start checking and testing the applications for a Windows 10 environment. Uh, we've got the remote PC. Wake on LAN capabilities, which came out, which is very nice if you're using remote PCs. And we've also got the receiver for 4.3 now is out. And one of the nice features about 4.3 that I like is that you now have a GUI option to configure single sign-on. So you don't need to do this at the command prompt any longer. You can do it, the user can choose to do single sign-on right there within that, that GUI, which is very nice. And we have storefront which is now going to be Storefront 3.0, which adds some additional features. And I'll show you the differences in the, the presentation of the, the management console, as well as from the user's perspective, how that's going to work. Now, one of the nice things that they did with the 7.6 environment, the 7X environment all together, is they consolidated all of the, the management consoles that we used to have. So if you were in a Zenapp 6.5 environment, it is in a Desktop 5.6 environment, or you still are and you're getting ready to roll over, we had two management consoles that we needed for those particular components, as well as a licensing console that you had to manage your systems on. Well, now we have the Citrix Studio. And the Studio console is going to give you the ability to look at, and I'll bring this up, not only the applications that you're going to publish out to your users, I'll make this a slightly larger, you can look at the applications that you're going to publish out to your users here. You can publish out your desktops as well, so you can choose to publish out desktops. and you can manage your licensing from this page. Now, this is going to give me an error message, primarily because my current license is getting ready to expire. But it, it, notice it said it's telling me that my licenses are about to expire. And I can, from this studio console, integrate with my license server and add in licensing, add, allocate licensing, change my license server. So I can do everything here that previously you would do directly on the, the license server. So the studio has consolidated multiple components in, in, within the environment. We also have the storefront console, which allows you to work on your storefront. Let me get this guy back up again. So on your storefront, we have a single console for con consolidating your storefront, creating your deployments for your users to come in via the web or via a Citrix receiver. The nice thing about storefront versus web interface, if you're using web interfaces, you no longer have to create two separate components. The web interface for website gave browser access, the web interface services site gave receiver direct. Now we just create what's called a store and we're good to go. This happens to be storefront 3.0, so if we look at the version, this is 3.0.1.56, this is the feature pack 3 version of, the, uh, of this particular component. We'll talk about that in just a few moments. We've also got Citrix Director, which is our management tool for looking at and monitoring our environment. And we can consolidate uh, Director with Netscaler and integrate it. We can also configure Director to manage multiple deployments of our system from one console. And when you're looking at the Director environment, you're looking at this. You're looking at your system as it is running right now inside of the system. So I can look at any failures I may see. I can see any error messages. Notice that my license server has, has pinged the, the, dire the director server and said, hey, you know what? Your licenses are about to expire. What should you do? Well, we need to get new ones, obviously. And so I can look at the sessions. And we'll come back and look at this one in uh, just a few moments. So we have the, we've consolidated the management functions uh, in our system. Quick things, uh, some of these are, uh, we're going to fly by this because I think the demonstrations will be just a little bit more uh, useful for you. The hardware requirements, basically we're looking at Server 2012 R2, Windows Server 2008 R2 on your system 100 megs. 
.NET 3.5 Service Pack 1 for uh, Server 2008 R2 machines. The .NET 4.0 environment, uh, ASP.NET PowerShell. PowerShell also has some new features in uh, Feature Pack 3 that you would need to install, uh, as well as your uh, the studio and other components. Um, supported hypervisors, pretty standard what the hypervisors are. The latest ones are uh, obviously going to be supported. So the, in the Zen server environment, they're supporting 6.5. The latest f feature pack for the Zen server 6.5 has the templates and support for Windows 10 uh, rollout, so that makes it easier to integrate that into your system. We use Hyper-V and VMware uh, vSphere uh, 5.5. The higher ones are being integrated slowly as we speak. The database platforms, pretty much uh, everything up through 2014, we're looking at the database. We no longer support the Oracle, however. So Oracle is no longer supported inside of the system, not because it's, it was a, it's a bad operating system, but because uh, they wanted to standardize some things. Um, so Oracle is no longer um, supported in the environment just for consistency sake across all platforms, that, and that's the only reason. Now, when you're dealing with the database, it is really important that you have um, the uh, high availability inside of your system so you can configure your databases in a standalone or a clustered version. Mirrored modes is the easiest one to configure for high availability, but if you're using the SQL Server Enterprise version, you can use the always-on feature uh, that is available in 2012 and 2014, so those will those make it a little bit easier to provide that, that high availability for your database, which is necessary for the 100% functionality of your deployment. The connection leasing being the, the exception that's going to allow you to see a, a minimal outage. Now, when we're looking at the Zen App 7.6 or the Zen Desktop 7.6, we do have some basic machines that you're going to be seeing uh, inside of your system. Once again, these are all going to be exactly the same machines, whether you're dealing with 7.6 for the Zen app environment or 7.6 for the Zen desktop, you're going to have delivery controllers. These delivery controllers take the place of your Zen app 6.5 data collectors and controllers and session uh, only systems. So the delivery controllers are the brokers for the environment. We're going to have a SQL Server database, which I mentioned 2012, uh, 2008, uh, Service Pack 3, or uh, 2014. We'll have a license server in our system to provide the licensing. Studio and director for managing and monitoring. Uh, storefront, currently we're on storefront 3.0.1 in the environment. 3.1 is currently in tech preview, so that should be coming out uh, relatively quickly. And you'll have a connection to your hypervisor in the system. So all of these are going to work together very, very closely to provide your users with the resources on the VDA-enabled machines, either the server VDA or the client VDA systems, VDA standing for virtual desktop agent. All of your resources will need to have this installed in order to provide them out to your users via the storefront console uh, within your system. So this will make it a little bit challenging for those of you that are starting to roll it out. And um, I'll, we're going to mention something on the VDA when we get to the feature pack three. The Architecture, basically, once you have deployed your architecture inside of your system, break it out into six different areas for uh, management compartmentalization. We look at the user layer. So we look at the user layer and what does, what's required on the user layer to provide access into our system. And primarily, you're looking at the Citrix receiver uh, uh, being installed on all the machines within your system. So you can use the Citrix receiver or if you are dealing with external systems where the user may not have the administrative rights to install the receiver on their machine, we can also use the HTML5 environment via storefront. You don't usually see the HTML5 option used internally because you do have the ability to install the receiver locally so that should be something that is already done for your users. Once the users are have their endpoint prepped to come into the system, now we'll either come in directly via storefront, 3.0 or 2.6, whichever version you happen to be running, or they may be coming in through the firewall into your network, into the, the DMZ, to the Netscaler device. Currently, Netscaler is on uh, it's on 11, so we may be using Netscaler. 
Netscaler 10.5, Netscaler 11. They'll come into the Netscaler. They'll come into the storefront, which will then tunnel its way into your internal network. Now you'll notice that Netscaler is in the DMZ, storefront is in your internal network, which is uh, a best practice to put your storefront inside of your network. Is it wrong to put it in the, the, the DMZ? Not technically wrong, but a best practice is internally because it is a member of the domain. We'll then come into the control layer, which is dealing with the infrastructure. When you, th when you hear the term control layer, think your infrastructure, your SQL server, your license server, your domain controllers, Active Directory, uh, DHCP and DNS, these are the components that will be needed inside of your environment to work effectively on your system. As well as having the, the delivery controller or controllers, and just as a real quick aside, when you're, when you're deploying your controllers, uh, always remember uh, the N plus one rule, where N is the number of virtual desktops you're going to be providing out divided by 5,000 plus one, that will give you the number of controllers you really should have. So minimum should be two. And the image controllers deals with the images that we're going to have. You can either use MCS, which is part of Zen Desktop, Zen App, or you can deploy provisioning services. Uh, 7.6 is the currently uh, released version. We then have the ability to come in and do resource configuration and deciding which operating systems to give out, what apps to give out, and how to personalize those apps and those desktops for our users. Then we have the hardware layer hosting it, and then the management layer, which is where most people will spend their day-to-day -day activities on, using Studio to manage, to create it and manage your policies, your applications and desktops, using Director to monitor those, uh, Storefront to deliver them, and or then using the PVS console for creating machines that would be deployed via the provisioning services option, as well as some of the other components you may see out there, license administration, the hypervisor console, uh, usually you see a delineation of work and your user may, your average Citrix administrator aren't going to see these particular components uh, in the system. Once you have your architecture in place, we deploy the resources. And when we're deploying resources, we're looking at a different methodology of providing out the servers for our applications. With previous versions of ZenApp 6.5 and earlier, we use what is called a multi-master system, wherein each server required updating whenever you made an update to your system. So you would need to come in and update each one of your systems. And what you would see is something similar to this. You would have uh, within your, uh, your, your system a multiple machines here. So you'd have these multiple servers uh, within the environment. When you would, this would be your multi-master system where in each Zenapp server, you physically came to each one of these and you installed Zenapp on each one of these. When you would do your updates, you would need to ensure that you went to each one of these machines and you did your updates. When you installed applications, you would need to go to each one and ensure you installed each one of your applications. Today, uh, with the 7.6 employment, we have a, what I call a single master system. So you're going to have a single master system wherein you have a single machine uh, within your environment, let's say you create a server 2012 machine for deploying out resources in your environment. So you have a server 2012 uh, R2 master VM. On the master VM, you would imply, apply all of your updates. So we do our updates to the system here. We would install our applications here. Then we would take this master machine, we would copy it to what's called a base disk. So we're going to have a base disk inside of the system, which is a complete copy of the original machine. Once this base disk is done, the systems are disassociated from each other. We'll then take the base disk and we will associate it with multiple machines inside of the environment. So we'll have multiple copies of, of this system here, all bearing this exact same uh, components. So all we need to do is do our, our single master, and now everything is going to be rolled out, and you're good to go on the system.
Um, the downside being that any mistakes you make on the master machine when you originally create it will automatically be propagated out to all of your other systems. So you want to be careful when you're, you're doing your updates in, on your system. So now this is how we update our system. And when we deploy our resources, this makes it even easier. So when we want to come in and deploy resources on the system, we can come in and deploy them from a single console. So if I need to, I can come in and choose to go to, say, my a a component called the delivery group. I want to add in an application. Currently, I have Excel, PowerPoint, Publisher, and Word. Well, I want to add in a new application to this, and this makes it very, very easy. I can choose to add an application, and the system will basically query the server you're looking at and say, all right, what do you got installed on there? Um, can I, uh, let's go ahead and install it. So I can go in and rapidly choose components to deploy out to my system. So I can choose to give out, let's just say, WordPad and Calculator. So I can add these out. Now if I need to, I can also limit the view of this. So I can choose to say, you know, for the WordPad application, I only want certain users to be able to see this. So in this case, we'll go ahead and add in the domain administrators or group. So you can choose to limit the application to a specific group. Additionally, a more advanced feature you have when you're dealing with this is you can come in and filter a group. So I could give this out to a the domain users group and then come in and filter it and say, we're giving it out to everybody, but David doesn't get it. So I can filter David out. So I don't need to go in and create specific groups uh, for that. So I can come in, and now I've got a now I've got a new application published uh, on the system, and you'll see actually I have two. I have Calculator and WordPad, which I was able to rapidly publish out. I didn't need to do all the different steps that you saw inside of the Zenapp 6.5 environment. Now, when we're looking at the application deployment, some of the things that we do have uh, in the system, we have available to us some specific characteristics for the users launching. We have session lingering and with session lingering we linger a user session after they log off to facilitate them launching a secondary application. So for instance I come in, I launch Word, I'm working on Word, I'm done, I close it out. When I close it out my session on the server Notice I said server, not a client desktop, will linger. It's going to hang around for the amount of time that I choose for it to hang around uh, within the system. So this is on the back end once the user logs off. If you have configured single sign-on for your receivers, we also have the ability to do pre-launch capabilities where we launch the session before the user ever even begins uh, to use an application. This is to facilitate a user perceived faster log on. So the system will create the session before they ever choose a, an application to run. And these are set inside of the studio. Uh, so these are some components we'll see in the studio. The application folder uh, organization, this allows us to organize applications inside of studio for administrative purposes only, uh, as well as we can turn on some desktop icons with the receiver. So when we're looking at these, we have the ability to come in and pre-launch a session. I'm going to show you where you do that. So when you choose to pre-launch a session on a server grouping of machines, I can choose to edit my delivery group. And you'll see on the option here the, the option to uh, pre-launch a session. And you can be very granular on this as to who you want. We can launch it when any user that is assigned to this particular server group is uh, logged on to the system. Or we can be very specific and say only uh, certain groups or users are going to have that uh, come into the environment. We can also then come in and specify the time that we want this pre-launch session to hang around without the user actually launching an application, the default being two hours on the system. But we do have a failover in the eventuality that your servers become overloaded. We can start closing out unused sessions on the system uh, once they reach a, a, a threshold, uh, in this case the default being 70%. The lingering site has pretty much the, the same thing. The lingering has pretty much the same thing, but this is going to be where we linger it after the user is 
left their last application. In this case, uh, we'll linger it for eight hours. Uh, I'm not that generous, so usually I'm going to come in and configure this guy to about 60 minutes. I don't want that thing hanging around for eight hours on the system. So we can do the uh, we can do this uh, the pre-launch, or we can do the lingering on the system. So these are some newer features. We can also look at our applications. And you'll notice that I've got a listing of all my applications here. Well, for administrative purposes, you can come in and choose to create a folder and move applications into the folder. So I'm going to create a folder for my Microsoft products. So I'll do this my Microsoft apps. So now I have a folder here for Microsoft apps. I'll click the show all button and I'll see the, I'll just choose the Microsoft applications and I'll move these into that folder. This is going to allow you to break your applications up so that you only see the particular ones you want. And for some reason, I moved this guy up there, so I'm going to move you back. That's right. Notice I was able to drag and drop. So the drag and drop option will work uh, as well uh, inside of your system. When you're um, so, so that's the session pre-launch, and that's the studio that we have uh, inside of the system for configuring our applications. When we're looking at the actual brokering of the system, on each one of your delivery controllers, you're going to have a connection leasing. So we have that connection leasing feature, we did the pre-launch, that allows you to broker connections that have been requested after the SQL Server has gone down. So in this case, the controllers will remember the connections that it made uh, within the last two weeks. So the system's going to remember the connections that it brokered within the last 14 days, and if the user comes in and the SQL Server database happens to be down, it will go ahead and allow the user to come into the system as long as they have launched it. They have to have launched it. Now, when you're looking at your controllers, I'll pull one over here, the connection leasing cache, just for those of you that are curious as to where it's located, are going to be located on the C drive, on your C drive, you're going to have a folder for program data, and you'll see Citrix, and you're going to see the broker. There's your cache right here. So this is going to cache all the apps and the desktops that the user may have launched within the last uh, 14 days. So this is your connection leasing. Gives you some additional features. Now, as I mentioned, since 7.6 was released uh, last year, there have been three feature packs. Uh, feature pack one was released, in, was released in March of this year, and it brought back the session recording capability that the Smart Auditor feature in 6.5 had. So the, this gave us or gives us the capability to record sessions for the user, uh, for security purposes, auditing purposes, training purposes, whatever you happen to use. This does require you to install some additional features uh, to be used by Citrix Director. We also brought in some HDX real-time optimization for the Microsoft Link products for web meetings on the system. Feature pack one, relatively straightforward. Two came out in May, the end of May, beginning of June, and it brought in even more enhancements on your system. Uh, brought in some additional real -time, HDX real-time optimization features that are done, created via policy. It released uh, Receiver 4.3. Uh, Storefront 3.0 came out. We'll talk about some of the uh, d advanced features of Storefront 3 in, in a moment. Uh, it brought in the support for Linux virtual desktops. So now we can bring in a Linux virtual desktops for your users to be deployed via the Storefront uh, access point. Uh, we also did, or uh, they brought in HDX with Framehawk to support uh, mobile wireless users. And we added in some additional smart auditor session recording features uh, within the system. So it, it brought in and, and further enhanced the uh, smart auditor sessions that we saw with Feature Pack 1. We'll look at Storefront 3 in just a moment, too. Um, feature Pack 3 just came out. And Feature Pack 3 now brought in or increased access and application compatibility for Windows 10. So if you're deploying Windows 10 within your environment, now the Feature Pack 3 is going to uh, have the capability to uh, give you that and publish out applications to that, uh, securing the knowledge that it should be working. 
we brought in some additional HDX policy templates. And since we have Windows 10, we're still uh, integrating that. So they brought in some enhanced printing with Windows 10 using the Universal Print Server or the UPS component. This is really nothing more than a service you install on a Windows Print Server in your environment. They added in some additional security and performance options. For instance, if you are uh, preventing jailbroken devices from coming into your system, we now have the ability to configure that within our Zenapps and Desktop 7.6 environment. And they enhanced paperless and virtual work uh, workplace support for uh, things such as uh, tablets, uh, drawing tablets. For instance, uh, I use a drawing tablet in my, in my teaching. If I were doing this in, the, in a session, it would be difficult for me to use this, uh, without this without this support in the system. And you're going to see a lot of comp users that are going to uh, use that. Now, when 2.6 storefront version came out, we had some features inside of that are worthy of mentioning. We had the ability to do anonymous or unauthenticated access. This gives you the option of providing a storefront interface for users that you don't need them to log on. You're in a kiosk situation, school, hotel, public setting, where you don't want users to have to look at a sticky note on the monitor to log into the system. So this allows us to create an anonymous delivery group. It's also very useful in a production environment where you may have an internal application that already has its own authentication um, modality. And so this would allow you to create an anonymous system so the user would not need to uh, log on a second time. Uh, we have the receiver for HTML5. Uh, we have mandatory applications where this is already uh, published on the user storefront. This makes it uh, a web interface style storefront server. So if you're transitioning away, this gives you that option. Uh, parallel resource enumeration, the delivery controllers will enumerate applications from multiple sites simultaneously, which helps to speed up the the logon process, the enumeration process. We have some pass-through authentication for receiver for web, increased smart card authentication, as well as uh, the integration of Netscaler single smart card sign-on for receiver for web. Now, when we're looking at 3.0, 3.0 built on the 2.6 develop uh, deployment, but it added some additional components into the the management console. It all changed the way the users see the, the web browser or the receiver access on the system. And we added in the XML service based authentication. So with 3.0, what you're going to see now is this. When we're looking at storefront, we have some additional features when we're dealing with the uh, storefront component. For one, we have the ability to come in and configure the session timeout, which is very nice. We have the uh, we also have the same thing we had on the previous versions. However, now we have the ability to integrate. You can enable the classic receiver uh, experience. This is the green bubble experience that you're used to seeing up to this point. You can you can choose to continue using that if you want. You can also customize your receiver now. So now when you're looking at the browser or you're looking at the receiver from the user's perspective, you can brand it with your company logo. You can change the color, the background color for the receiver on the system. You can change the text and icon. So you have options for how you can do the presentation. Previously, you had to go into the web config file and manually change this on the system. Now we have this directly on the console for our users to come in and see. Uh, we also have some optimizations for setting the unified experience as a default so that the all the users see everything. We still have to disable the user subscriptions, all of these, but we have additional tools that we can come in. Now from a user's perspective, they're going to see this. The user is going to come in and they will log on to this session. This is your unified experience. This is, this is what they call the X1 browser graphics. I'll go ahead and log on as a user. And when the user logs on, we're going to see a different format rather than what you're used to seeing with the Storefront 2.6. Instead of having this a subscription menu option on the left-hand side, your users are going to see three components at the top by default. Their favorites, things that they have, chosen to show on their screen, which essentially takes the place of them subscribing to something. 
uh, the desktops that they have available on the system, the desktops component will not show up if there's nothing published out to the users, and the apps, but with the apps you have an additional capability. With the apps, you can create what are called application categories across the top of the screen. Uh, I've created a number of them in a different ways, and you can just start bringing in the applications so that if the user needs to do the, just the Microsoft Office and you have multiple applications, they can come in directly to the Microsoft Office component and launch an application uh, on their system. We have the ability to now come in and give our users more of what they might need in the system without confusing them too much. The favorites, though, will just anyone that the user comes in and adds a, their system to a favorite. So, for instance, I have Word and Excel. The user can come in and say, you know what, I want PowerPoint to be on my favorites. They just click the details and add it to their favorites and then go back to their favorites and they've added it. You can always come in and remove it from the favorites as well. Additionally, you can now launch an application directly from that this particular component. Previously, you had to subscribe to it, so now all I need to do is open it up, and it will open up the application uh, within my system. So now I've got calculator running. I've got a couple of things running on the system here, and I'm, I'm good to go. So these are some of the enhancements on storefront um, 3.0 that you're going to see within the environment. So 3.0, it's out. 3.1 is is currently in um, the tech preview. Um, now the monitoring, we have the store, the Citrix Director, which is using the Director component that you've got installed within your environment. So this gives you some monitoring and troubleshooting within your system, so you can see what's going on inside of your system for your users and give your help desk team the ability to control your environment, and it will give you some additional management features that you won't see inside of Studio. So when we're looking at the director component, when we're looking at the director, it's going to show you everything going on inside of your system right now on the global page. So we can see the number of sessions that are, are coming in, what's our infrastructure working. If I need to go at the sessions, I can come in and look at all the sessions that are currently being run inside of the system. If I need to tunnel down into a particular user, I can just double click on the user and I can come in and see what they're actually doing inside of their system. And he's not actually logged on there for some reason. So I can look at the process. So this user is currently using PowerPoint. If I need more information, I can click the details tab and this will now come in and show me more details about not only the application they're running, but what server are they running it on, their session, what's going on in the session, and uh, any policies that may be applied to their system. Now, um, the director, very nice feature. If I need to, I can disconnect a user, I can shut down a machine, I can end the user's application uh, remotely for them. So this is the director component and they're continuing to enhance this feature with additional capabilities with every feature back. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is all about the licensing. So everything you're going to see is going to be what license did you purchase. And you can upgrade your licensing. So if you purchase advanced licensing, you can then come in and get the Enterprise and the Platinum. So that's the Zenapp Zen Desktop 7.6 in a nutshell very quickly. Uh, so Rich, I'll turn the floor over to you for Q&A. Great, David. Thank you very much. We uh, do have several questions that were submitted, so I'm going to go down the list, and we'll try okay. our best to, uh, to answer these. Um, the first question is this. Does Citrix Director do any historical data or provide historical data? Yes, Director, depending on your licensing, uh, Director will uh, allow you to keep your data for up to a, uh, for up to a year with the Platinum licensing. The, with the standard licensing, or the, uh, the, or the advanced licensing, I should say, you're allowed to keep your data for seven days. If you have the enterprise, or the platinum version, you can do it up to a year. It's set at 90 days. You would need to go in and reconfigure that. Great. Thank you. The next question, will SSO work with smart cards and pens? Yes. Okay. Uh, next question, let's see. What are the recommended specs? for a 150-user environment for um, ZenApp 7.6 and PVS. Is that too loaded? That's a difficult, yeah, that's too loaded. We need to know what they're... Um, so if you're for, uh, say, 150 users, uh, a minimum you could get away with would be a single uh, delivery controller. 
and a single storefront, that's a loaded question. There's too many variables that come into that. If they want to send us an email, I can send them more information. Okay, great. So that question is from uh, from Brandon. So Brandon, if you if you would send us an email with more details, we'd be happy to get back with you. Um, and then the next question is, does session pre-launch work with receiver for web configured with SSO? Uh, no, this is, it has to be done to be the, the session pre-launch. It requires Citrix receiver. That's a receiver component. Okay. Um, next question. Can app lingering be set for a specific app in the delivery group, or is it all or nothing? Yes, you can. Uh, that's a that's going to be more of a PowerShell uh, configuration. You're going to have to get under the hood and do the actually type the commands in there. So that's a that's a little bit yeah. So yeah, that's going to be yes, you can do it. It's a little more complicated. Okay, great. Next question: Do FRs roll up or are they progressive and have to be st installed in order? Like um, you, yeah. I'm assuming you mean feature packs on that one. Oh yeah, sorry, um, feature packs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was I had that question as well, so I just tried it. And no, you don't. They are rolled up. So if you have Feature Pack three, you would install Feature Pack three. Uh, the best there are several blogs on how to do this, and you need to be a little bit careful when you're dealing with your SQL Server database. But always make sure you upgrade your license server with any of the upgrades that might come with that one. Then uh, do. Uh, I usually shut down one of my con my controllers except for the primary one. Then I uh, I upgrade that one. Then I have to upgrade the database. So the system will do the, all that automatically for you. Then upgrade your uh, your subsequent uh, controllers. Then do your director on your system. Okay. Thanks, uh, David. I do have a follow-up question from Brandon, and we're we're going to get back to him with some more details. But um, I think this is a good question. Uh, it's it's regarding the differences between Zen App and Zen Desktop. So, um, mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to publish desktops with Zen App 6.5, or or do you have to have licensing for Zen Desktop? Are we talking 6.5 or 7.6? Uh, um, let me like, let me do it. Yeah, it looks like they're using 6.5. Okay, with ZenApp 6.5, you can publish server desktops. So you're able to publish out a server desktop with ZenApp 6.5. If you have 7.6 or the 7x versions, you now have the ability to publish out natively both server desktops as well as Windows 8 and other client desktops. Now, if you're in a ZenApp 6.5 environment, you would also need, if you wanted to give out uh, client desktops such as Windows 7 or Windows 8, you would need to install a second deployment of ZenApp desktop 5.6 and then integrate the two of those. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Um, we have uh, several more questions bef before, and we have about 10 minutes left. So before I get to the other questions, I've received a few inquiries about if this session is going to be distributed or recorded, and yes, it is recorded. We will be sending an email with a link to download the recording. Um, you can forward it to coworkers or anyone that you want and they'll be able to download and view the uh, the webinar recording. Okay, the next question, what version of Zen app does Storefront 3 support? Um, all the 7 7 6s um, I'll have to double check whether or not it supports Zen app 6.5. That one I'm not sure of off the top of my head. The uh, support uh, it should support the 6.5 and 6.0 environment. Um, the, nothing's changed from the 2.6 on that one, but it should go back. Previous runs, not so much. Okay. Next question. How do you set specific window sizes for different apps? In ZenApp 6.5, you could specify this under published application properties. Yes, when you're dealing with the applications, you can go in and specify the size that you want for the screen. Uh, that would be under the application properties in the GUI, or you could go in and do that in the uh, PowerShell. So you still have that capability. Okay, great. Maybe you can read between the lines here, David. What version of provisioning server will be used? I'm assuming with 7.6? 7 7.6. 7 okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, the 7.6 provisioning services brought in some additional features, fixed some bugs, um, as well as brought in uh, capabilities for Windows 10. What are the limits for using SQL Express as the database backend? 
Um, you can use SQL Server Express for the back end. It's really designed for two environments. One, uh, proof of concept environments and very, very small single site deployments. Um, you really should only use it for up to about 100 users' machines in the system. You will not be able to provide any high availability. So if you're using SQL Server Express, it's perfectly valid uh, use. It's, 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 it works. Uh, you just won't be able to do any of the high availability, which is really critical for large enterprise systems. But for a small one, small environment, you could probably get away with it using the connection leasing if you can tolerate a short database outage. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have another question. Uh, it says, this new version seems to be a lot less Zen app friendly than previous versions. Are there any plans to go back to, you know, like a more uh, Zen app friendly design in future releases? Not that I know of. I don't know that it's, it's not, I don't know that it's Zen app unfriendly. You just have to, do, we can do the same thing inside of the, this version that you could previously. You just have to get to it from a different, uh, from a different location. So everything, just about everything you can do in Zen app 6.5, you can do here. The, the interface may not be quite what you're used to. Once you get used to it, what I, what I have found, Rich, is that when users start coming in and at first uh, glance, they, are a little bit intimidated by the change. Once they start using it, they go, oh, all right, yeah, this isn't so bad. So. Okay, that's good feedback, thanks. Are there any um, tools to customize or rebrand the end user view of the storefront page, or are you just kind of yeah. stuck with what you see? Um, yeah, there are several blogs out there that will allow you to rebrand it, and you can. I've seen storefronts that have you know Star Wars backgrounds on them, so you can go and you can customize it however you want. It's not as uh, facilitated as it was in web interface, but there are a couple of enterprising engineers out there that created some JavaScript, uh, some JRE environments that will uh, help you out on that. But yeah, no, you can do exactly the same thing. I've seen some really cool sites. Okay, cool. Um, does Feature Pack 3 provide the ability to limit access to an app v app within Studio? Within Studio, no. Okay. Uh, we have a question about upgrading from 7.5 to 7.6. Is it just an upgrade or do you have to like rebuild and reinstall everything? It's just... It's just an upgrade. Yeah, it, okay. It's it's not it's yeah it's not that difficult. Like I said, you do your license server seven five used license server eleven eleven uh, with uh, seven six. You'll need eleven twelve point one, so you need to upgrade that. Then you just upgrade your controllers. Then you'd have to update your your SQL Server database. So um, I usually uh, do one do one controller first. I usually shut the other ones down just to clear everything up. Uh, then run the up just run the feature pack and um, you're, you're good to go. Can you skip a feature pack? Can you go from one to three? Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, I, in, I installed on my system the, um, the feature packs. Uh, I, I, I had seven, I basically had seven, six on my system, and I went ahead and put in, I just, from the original install, and then I did the, uh, the installation, and what I did was, uh, I basically, let me pull this over here, um, just created a, a folder on the system and each one of the ones that needed to be updated, I would come in, I did my license server first, then I came in and did my controllers, and on the controllers, I just went down the list and just installed them, then I came in and did my um, director, then I did my storefront, and yada, 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 and you can just do them, just go right from the initial right up to feature pack three, which is what I did, and it works fine. Okay, excellent. We did have one comment from someone that they are um, running Storefront three with a Zen app uh, six five environment. So yeah, so. I was pretty sure. I, yeah, I was pretty sure it was supported. Okay, great. So we have a f we have several questions left, and we don't have time to get to them. Um, but what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll reply to everyone that has submitted a question with uh, the best answer we can provide you. Um, if you'd like a little more detail, feel free to uh, reply to our email and, and uh, we can try to dig a little bit deeper. Um, so on behalf of uh, David and, and Larry Training, um, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedules to attend our webinar. 
Uh, David, thank you for taking time out of your class uh, to present this webinar today. We hope that uh, everyone found it useful. As a reminder, we will be sending out a recording um, that you are free to download and forward to anyone that you want. And uh, please stay tuned for more announcements on scheduled webinars that we're going to have in the future uh, on all the Citrix products, including um, Netscaler and Zen Mobile. So again, on behalf of uh, David and Layer 8 Training, uh, we are going to sign off. Thanks again, and uh, happy holidays to everyone.